Mega Man March Mega Month Madness! <laughs> Mega Man and I go way back. Back to 1987, actually. You see, Mega Man and I were built the same year. We met when I was about five or so, and we've been best friends ever since. Now, recently Mega Man's father left his family, and the rest of them don't really seem to care that he just turned 25. So it's up to me now. As Mega Man's best friend, I give you the top 10 most killer Mega Man bosses of all time. This is my first installment for Mega Man March, so I hope you enjoy it. Quick Man. Ah, Mega Man 2. What a classic. What a kick-ass cast of Robot Masters. Well, sort of. But in my opinion, Quickie here certainly makes the grade. Well known for being a giant pain in the ass to defeat, Quick Man is one of the most feared Robot Masters of all time. That son of a bitch can jump like 30 feet in the air, shoot boomerangs all over the place, and if none of that works out, he can just truck you! He's goddamn fast! They should call him goddamn Fast Man! Mega Man's creator, Keiji and Afane, actually intended for him to be an antagonist character to Mega Man. They have sort of an unspoken rivalry. To express this, Inafune wanted to highlight Quick Man in some way, so he made him the only boss in the game whose design actually extended outside the borders of the boss select menu. Look at that boomerang. See how it taunts you? Just makes you want to kill the bastard. Agile. Now we leap forward X games to Mega Man X2. Agile isn't one of the game's eight Maverick bosses, but actually a new class of enemy called an X-Hunter. A class created to counter Mega Man X. And when I say class, I mean class A. Look at those coattails, that cocky smirk, that style in purple. This jackwad can't even be bothered to look at you. Like Quick Man, Agile is very... Agile. I find the fight with him to be incredibly fun and fast-paced. It's a bit intimidating. I mean, the guy just oozes confidence. Not to mention the pressure you feel while fighting him. You see, if you're not familiar with Mega Man X2, due to events in Mega Man X that I'll cover later, Agile is actually keeping part of your pal Zero in his possession. And if you don't defeat him, Zero stays in the hands of the bad guys. So, yeah. Killing this guy? Super important. When it comes down to it, though, he's really not that tough. I don't know, I just think he's cool, okay? Ryu! Street Fighter Cross Mega Man is a brand new addition to the Mega Man lineup, but it's certainly a Mega Man game in every way. And what Street Fighter without Ryu? On the surface, this is just another boss battle, but it's so much more than that when you think about it. I mean, it's Ryu for crying out loud, from Street Fighter! It's almost like a deathmatch set up to determine who gets to be Capcom's official mascot. These are two of the most recognizable video game characters of all time, and getting to see them fight it out and even be part of it is so cool. And it's actually a really fun fight, too. When I go up against Ryu with just my Mega Buster, I'm never totally sure I'm gonna win. He's a crafty fighter, and he can manage to pull one over on you. When you beat him, you of course get the Hadouken, which is freaking cool as hell, and it can even be charged up for a faster orange blast. Although it's not quite as good as the secret Hadouken you can get in Mega Man X. But did you know there's one more Mega Man boss that knows the Hadouken technique? Magma Dragoon! Raise your hand if you played Mega Man X4! Sorry, if you're raising your hand, I can't see it. But you're officially cool in my book. Like Quick Man in Mega Man 2, Magma Dragoon is differentiated from the other seven bosses in the game. He makes an appearance early on to let you know he's switching sides on you, which pretty much means you'll get to rip him a new one later on. He's not the easiest boss to fight, but I always make a point to hunt him down first when I'm playing through the game as Zero. Defeating him is a challenge I thoroughly enjoy. Zero and Dragoon have an exchange that goes something along the lines of, I'm gonna kick your ass! No, I'm gonna kick your ass! No, bitch! I'm gonna kick your ass, okay?! The stage is set in an underground chamber with insta-kill lava on either side. Dragoon fires off Hadoukens and Shoryukens all over the place and has a bunch of other crazy fire attacks. Defeating him gives you the re-engine if you're playing as Zero, and if you're playing as X, uh... Who plays as X? The Devils. This asshole shows up in a lot of different forms in a lot of Mega Man games, and almost every time he's a giant pain to defeat. Most memorably, the Yellow Devil in Mega Man 1 and 3, and the Shadow Devil from X5. Now the first thing that should scare the crap out of you when you fight this guy is the music. This is by far one of the most sinister sounding tracks in any Mega Man game to date. Typically these devil things consist of some sort of slime junk, and a robotic core eye thing. They kind of melt down from solid form to liquid and launch themselves across the screen toward Mega Man, forcing him to jump around in order to avoid damage. 
He even has a cute little maneuver where he puts half of his slime on either side of the screen and attacks you simultaneously from both sides. But after a bit of pattern memorization and muscle memory, you get the hang of it. Unless you're fighting Shadow Devil, that is! This asswipe's attacks are random. RANDOM! You just have to have the reflexes of a friggin' coked out spider monkey, and maybe you'll stand a chance! Next to the pants-shitting remix of his usual theme, your senses are so overloaded, it's no wonder this is one of the hardest bosses in Mega Man history. Gotta hate this guy. Why'd I even put him on here? Mega Man X. You bet your sweet ass, it's Mega Man X himself. How could this not make the list? This battle takes place in Mega Man X5 during the final stages of the game if you're playing a Zero. Long story short, X and Zero are both convinced the other is infected with the computer virus that makes robots go maverick and kill the crap out of people. So here they are. Two best friends unable to escape the ultimate purpose their creators always had for them. To destroy each other. I apologize for the drama, but that shit is just cool. And are you hearing this music? Epic. Just epic. The fight with X isn't incredibly difficult, but it's pretty cool to see him wearing his ultimate armor and using the different powers he would have collected through defeating the game's eight maverick bosses. That being said, it still pretty much chills down your spine fest. I mean, it basically takes losing to him at least once just to process what's actually happening. You're playing Mega Man X5 as Zero, and you're fighting Mega Man X. Holy balls. Face and Treble. A boy and his dog, what a team. Seriously though, look at Mega Man and Rush. How many times has Dr. Wily failed to stop the dynamic duo? Like, 15 or so? So somewhere around the sixth time, Wily got the bright idea to create his own boy-dog combo to counter Mega Man, and he did it using a powerful new element he accidentally discovered called Base Neom. Nice one, Capcom. Thus, Base and Treble were born. Base shows up first in Mega Man 7 and challenges Mega Man, not letting on that he's actually working for Wily, but eventually he shows his true colors. In the final fight with Base and Treble, which takes place in Dr. Wily's fortress, Base and Treble show off their fusion technique, and the result is incredibly badass. <clears throat> it's actually more badass than Mega Man 8, but there's one huge reason I prefer the fight in 7. If you manage to collect all the hidden Rush letters in the Robot Master stages, you unlock Rush's Super Adapter, which grants you your own fusion technique that turns you into SUPER MEGA MAN! A boy in his jetpack and detachable rocket fist. What a team. So when I saw Bass and Treble combine to fight me, what was the first thing my 10-year-old mind did? I'm gonna fuse with Rush, and we'll have a fusion battle, and we'll see whose fusion is better, you big dickhole! Well, I'm pretty sure I didn't say dickhole when I was 10, but you get the idea. Just look at this fight. How amazingly fun and cool is that? Zero. Mega Man X2 really had some badass moments, and most of them happen right here. Depending on whether or not you were able to defeat Agile and his buddies, one of two outcomes is possible. If you were successful, Sigma appears accompanied by a Black Zero, who he claims to be the real deal. Moments later, the real Zero, who's been rebuilt from the parts you recovered and equipped with a spanking new beam saber, busts through the door and decimates the copy, at the same time insulting Sigma's ability to read blueprints. However, if you let the bad guys keep Zero's parts, then when Sigma shows up with Zero, it's the real deal. And you have to fight him. Consider your pants shat in. And by god, he ain't easy. I mean, he does have an identifiable attack pattern, but when every single attack of his is devastatingly powerful and hard as balls to dodge, you're in for the fight of your life. And once again, the music is enough to put your nerves on the edge of their seats. Honestly, I think this is my favorite Mega Man track of all time. Stigma. Well, if it's not painfully obvious at this point, I really love the Mega Man X series. Sigma is one nasty character. This fight is so mother lickin' cool, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, first you gotta fight his stupid dog. <laughs> Whatever. Sigma laughs in the face of his canine companion's demise, shoots one more taunt your way, and then throws off his cape like a badass. He pulls out a freaking beam saber and commences to trash you like the little blue shit stain you are. I mean, just look at how this battle is presented. All that build up, you can just feel the tension. This is it. If X wasn't made of metal, you can be sure he'd be standing in a nasty-ass pool of his own sweat at this point. And my god, the music! The music! Yeah, that shit is traumatic. Vile. My god, here we are at last. So my top two bosses are from the same damn game, but whatever! 
Mega Man X is my favorite game ever, hands down, and one of the reasons is the struggle you go through against this son of a dick. In order to fully understand why Vile is the most insane boss from the entire Mega Man franchise, I'll need to give you a little backstory. Now, if you've played Mega Man X or seen the great Ego Raptor's Mega Man sequelitis, you already know this, but for the rest of you, prepare your anus! Mega Man X is different from the classic series in a lot of ways, and one of the first differences you notice is the addition of an intro level rather than just being thrown right into the boss select screen. At the end of the level, you run into this shithead. Vile comes down from his dropship, riding this beastly mech, and proceeds to smash the ever-loving piss out of you. You see, the intro level does a really good job boosting your confidence. You realize how much of an upgraded version of Mega Man you really are, and by the time you reach Vile, you feel like a badass. This whole scenario sends your confidence plummeting to Earth. You've got nowhere to run. Your attacks don't seem to be doing a damn thing. So, when he's decided your rear has received enough pounding, he stuns you with some kind of energy ball and picks you up with one arm like a lunatic, laughs in your face and calls you some names. Man, what a douche. Enter Zero. This was his first appearance ever, and as far as entrances go, he gets an 11.5 million. I mean, here you are getting choked out like a little bitch, and Zero just shows up and blows Vile's arm clear off, which must have scared the shit out of him because he doesn't hesitate to get the hell out of there. Zero gives you a little pep talk and tells you some bullshit lie about how you'll be as strong as him someday, and then tells you he'll meet up with you later once you're done proving you're not a total failure. So you beat eight Mavericks, find some armor, and have a jolly old time doing it. Finally, it's time to tackle Sigma's fortress, and who better to put a little pep in your step than your pal Zero? Zero! Oh, hey man! You're not gonna believe all the crap I just did, dude! Listen, I gotta tell you about some stuff, man! <laughs> Son of a bitch! Anyway, you get to the end of the level, and who should fall from the sky like the goose turd he is? Vile, of course. But wait, he's not in his suit! I can take him now! And then BAM! Zero shows up, tells you to stand back so the professionals can work, and runs off into the next room to kick Vile's ass. You can actually hear the fight happening in the other room, and to this day, I try to hurry through the door as fast as possible. And every time, I'm too late. Well, shit. I guess it's up to me now. And once again, you can't do a damn thing to this asshole. It looks like he has you all but defeated, when suddenly, Zero breaks out, latches onto Vile, and begins to self-destruct, giving you one last chance to wipe this scum off the face of the earth. I remember it going a little something like this. The rage you feel toward Vile finally has a chance to come out, and I don't care how good you are at Mega Man, you as a player become possessed by the spirit of vengeance itself, and you take it all out on this dill hole. And it feels good. So yeah, that's why Zero isn't all together in X2. Pretty crazy, huh? Well there you have it. I might be a little obsessed with the X series, but can you blame me? Go play it! Play them all! Well don't go too far past X4, things start to get... Scary. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed rambling. Hit me up on Facebook, facebook.com slash dookieshedvids, and make sure you subscribe or else you know what'll happen. <laughs>